Firearms instructor Michael Malouf joins us from Reston, Virginia. He's a former senior strategic ana analyst for the Pentagon. Thank you very much for your time. Now, in January, a 2016 blog post by the NRA uh, said that the AR-15 was called America's Rifle. Could you explain to us why a gun that's based off a military version, essentially designed to kill people quickly and in large numbers, is America's Rifle? Well, it's a very popular uh, firearm. It uh, uh, stems from the Vietnam War, as you pointed out. It's a civilian version of the, uh, M of the M16. Uh, calling it an assault rifle is uh, uh, open to debate because it's uh, under the strictest definition of what is an assault rifle. It should have three different types of, of uh, uh, steps of, of, of semi-auto uh, burst uh, fire of three rounds and full auto. Uh, the AR-15 is, is uh, strictly semi-automatic, but the use of the term is convenient because now uh, firearms legislation in various jurisdictions lump uh, the AR-15 and other uh, firearms which have a removable uh, magazine of up to 20, even sometimes 30 uh, rounds in a magazine as, as an ass uh, assault uh, firearm. Sorry As to cut you off. Sorry to cut you off here. I, I, I wish we had a lot more time for this interview because I think it's quite interesting for an international audience. But what's confusing is that because it's you know we're talking about classifications here and how this rifle is described. At the end of the day, it has, it has extreme capabilities to assault sure. many people and kill a lot of people. So can you explain why in this country it is possible for an 18-year-old man to go and buy a rifle like this? Well, the majority of people who own the AR-15 and other semi-automatic uh, firearms are law-abiding citizens. Uh, it just so happens that this, this young man was uh, uh, passed all the uh, uh, federal, federal uh, tests. There, there, there's, a, there's a deeper problem here uh, in terms of, of uh, being able to uh, determine who, who is eligible, who isn't, and oftentimes the, the uh, na national uh, means of, of identifying uh, potential uh, 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 criminals uh, it, it goes on, goes unheeded. For example, uh, only 31 states actually contribute to a national uh, a database that, that allow for this kind of, uh, of scrutiny. And, and anybody who purchases a firearm, as this young man did, uh, goes through this, this check. But oftentimes it doesn't. It's not a complete check. It's not. It's not a. The information in there may 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 not reflect, let's so, say, a mental condition. So once again, I, I apologize for interrupting you, but. Um you know, I think that while you're explaining, you know, a deeper problem, and I understand that there are lots of layers in terms of, of this issue, but I feel like we're getting into the weeds here. There is a very simple problem, too. In 1994, President Bill Clinton signed an assault weapons ban, which banned the AR-15 and other similar semi-automatic -auto uh, rifles. And in that 10-year period, uh, mass shootings significantly dropped. So there is a very simple explanation for this, too, is there not? Well, they, they actually had to repeal it because it was considered to be ineffective. Uh, no, and, the and, statistics uh, show that the 10 years prior to that, mass killings were up, they dropped significantly in that 10-year period, and then after that, they went back up. So why, why, did, why did Congress repeal it? Because they felt it was ineffective. Well, so no, I, 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 think we, we, the facts. I think we know why. Those are the, the NRA is incredibly powerful. Well, it's just not the NRA because most law-abiding citizens go through uh, the, the, the trouble of being scrutinized, and they are law-abiding citizens. You know, it, we've had, for years, we've had people who own the AR-15. They have, and it's only in very, very recent times that we've had mass shootings. Now, I'm not defending this guy, but at, at the same time, this is a very recent development uh, of mass shootings in schools using uh, semi-automatics. Also, in some of these cases, we've had uh, uh, semi-automatic uh, uh, handguns used. I have a and list of they... six, six dates here dating back all the way to 2012 of schools where mass shootings occurred using an, uh, an AR-15. Hmm. Well, that's that, but it's very recent times. But the AR-15 has been sold for years and years and years. And most law-abiding law citizens who have an AR-15, they use it for sport. 
they they like to they like to target practice. They they use it for home. They can use it for defense, and uh, that that's and uh, and 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 you can you can you know you use a knife to cut an orange, but you can also use a knife to kill people. Now this happens to be something that's done on a much more lar lar on a larger scale, and uh, I'm not condoning that. But it, the the reality is is that this is a very difficult um, uh, egg to, to crack in terms of trying to figure out who is allowed to have these kinds of us weapons and 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 uh, and and what's how they're being used but the majority of holders of these type of firearms are law abiding citizens now you have you have anybody who's a criminal can get a gun if they want to and these laws are are aimed at basically uh, curbing the rights of of law abiding citizens not the criminals that's the problem